Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the June 22nd, 2011 Lorain County Board of Commissioners meeting. Commissioner Krakowski has our dog this week. Oh, she's strong. She's a strong little girl. This is uh, about a four-month-old Brindle um, Boxer Mix. She's uh, going to be available this Saturday at our dog pound. Uh, we have about 40-some dogs at the pound right now, so we need your help in, in coming to rescue some of our little friends out there. We have all kinds of dogs to choose from. You can also check us out on our website to see what we have available. Look at how nice she is. She's such a good girl. She wants to go home with somebody. I'm sure she'd make a wonderful pet for someone. Boxers are really, really nice dogs. So come out and help us out and uh, bring home a pet for your family. Number one, Job and Family Services Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Travel. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Under the commissioners, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction Lorraine County Commissioners. Mr. Cordes. Uh, Commissioner Kalo, I know you have a uh, pressing business shortly after the board meeting today, so I'm uh, going to not ask for an executive session, but I do want to get a resolution uh, with regard to the labor contract we discussed in the executive session last week. Mm -hmm. um, so we can either do that at the conclusion here, the regular agenda items, or I can ask for that resolution now, or what would be the flavor of the board? Uh, that's the FOP contract? Uh, correct. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. That should uh, conclude a need for this line item. Thank you. Approve and waive the reading of the same of the County Commissioner's meeting minutes of June 8th and 15th, 2011. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize the salary adjustment of Randall Widener, bailiff, Overland Municipal Court, effective July 4, 2011, at a biweekly rate of $511.24, reflecting two-fifths county share. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Approve and enter an agreement with Lorraine County Growth Partnership to include a direct partnership for Northeast yes, Ohio Sustainable Communities Consortium membership. $4.2 million was awarded by U.S. Department of HUD for three years to consortium with local governments and nonprofit organizations in Northeast Ohio through NUACA as formal application and fiscal agent. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize a supplemental trust indenture amendments to loan agreement and related documents for series 1997 bonds issued for the benefit 
of EMH Regional Medical Center. So moved. Second. Mr. Discussion. Cordes, mm -hmm. would you like to just give an update for the next three? Mm -hmm. Actually, I can't. Oh, well, you can't? Oh, okay. I didn't put them on the agenda. Oh, huh? okay. Well, what they are basically, they're just asking for a change from the 1997 uh, bonds we did for them, which we do for community health partners or Mercy Hospital also. Yeah, I was, uh, I had information from them, but I, I wasn't, I should have looked at the draft. It's my bad. I didn't well, see I read that they through were on so. there. Was I read through it, just changing uh, a couple of things in their items that have to be changed. Yeah, I think they're, they're uh, retiring some bonds. Right. And, it's still uh, over their cost. Right. But there's no, uh, we're, the county is not liable for any of the. Well, they're conduit bonds. We did the conduit right. bonds a number of years ago, and we actually asked uh, EMH to come back in county with their conduit bonds. They have been doing their, their health care bonds uh, out of county. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago, we re-engaged them to do them here in Lorain County, and we've had a very agreeable relationship. I just wasn't, I didn't pay attention to see that this was on there this oh, week. Okay. And I had been working with their council through our bond council. So I'm sure that everything has been uh, provided for that was necessary. I'll so move. Second. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Mr. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize the supplemental trust indenture amendments to loan agreement and related documents for, for series 2001 bonds issued for benefit of EMH Regional Medical Center. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Authorize the supplemental trust indenture amendments to loan agreement and related documents for series 2008 bonds issued for the benefit of EMH Regional Medical Center. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. I have a question. Would you like to get through 19, 20, and 25 and then go back to 16? Pleasure of the board so we can talk about that at the end. <coughs> sure. Yes. Okay. Please go to 19. Under 911, approve and enter an MOU with the Village of Wellington, where Village will provide ground area owned by the Village on Fairgrounds Road and the electricity, and 911 will provide this foundation and space for the Village's equipment and the communications building. This is a relocation of Lorain County Fire Systems repeaters from Southern Repeater Site, which is presently co located at State Route 58 Peck Wadsworth Road. Building will house Lorain County 911. Southwest Repeater, Combiner, Wellington Fire Repeater, Wellington Police Repeater, Southern Lorraine Ambulance <coughs> District Repeater, and County Voter Site Equipment. So moved. Second. Discussion. Was this added on? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't. This is, a, this is an agreement we've been working on since we lost our Verizon site. Uh, Jerry's been uh, very instrumental in, in working with the language so that we can have an alternative location for our equipment. We're, we're also being given... Uh, a portable, um, I guess you want to call it an office type, so to house the equipment and buy a Verizon. Uh, they no longer need that equipment, but we were housed with them in another location. The city of, the village of Wellington also has some equipment and they, they work collaboratively with us to uh, be able to work on that, use their tower out there, thus reducing some cost. There was just some nuances with the agreement with regard to liabilities and, and so forth. And I think, Jerry, you worked, you worked all those out in the, in the language? That's correct. And, and, and this MOU will provide for, for no-cost solutions to relocating some antennas and equipment to support the 911 operation. Okay. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under job and family, authorized purchase service agreements with various vendors for Title 20 social service block grant funded services for state fiscal year 12, effective July 1st, 2011 through June 30th, 2012. Authorized director to execute on behalf of the board and amend for changes in programming and increased value with prosecutor's approval as to form. One, Cambridge Home Health Services, Laria for homemaker home health services in the amount not to exceed 18000 Neighborhood House Association, Lorain County, Lorain for emergency <coughs> shelter services in the amount not to exceed 50000 Lorain County Safe Harbor, Lorain for domestic violence services in the amount not to exceed 12500 Volunteer Guardianship Organization, Lorain County, Laria for adult guardianship services in the amount not to exceed 9000 So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kahle? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorized purchase service agreement with Murray Ridge Production Center, Laria, for cleaning services for state fiscal year 12, effective July 1st, 2011 through June 30th, 2012, in the amount not to exceed 4500 Authorized director to execute on behalf of the board and amend for changes in program and increased value with prosecutors approve us to form. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kahle? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under solid waste, instruct clerk to seek proposals from bidders for operation of e-scrap collection and recycling program for the year 2012 with two <coughs> optional one-year renewal, notice in Chronicle on June 24th and July 1st, 
Pre-bid meeting at 10 a.m. on July 6th, room 532 at 5th floor administration building, and open at 2 p.m. on July 15th at meeting room D. So moved. Second. Discussion. Yes, I see Mr. Bailey's up Good to morning, talk about our East Scrap. Yeah, it's been three years, and it's time to go back out. Uh, the market has changed extremely in this area, and we're hoping for a positive change in our cost, all right? Okay. Wonderful. Thank Great. You. It's working well over there. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Mr. Williams? Oh, I'm sorry. On a vote for number? Yeah. Aye. For solid <laughs> waste. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Under work it's like Jim now. He doesn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Under workforce, amend resolution 11-377, adopted June 15, 2011, approving an intern to purchase a service contract with the Workforce Institute for the purchase one-stop service coordinator. Effective July 1st, 2010, in the amount of $2,913,974. Said amendment is to reflect an increase of $39,808 due to the rapid response coordinator funding from WEA Services. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Approve and enter an MOU with Workforce Institute in Lorain County and Workforce Development Agency to assist in the hiring and employment of a youth work experience coordinator. Her primary function is to place youth program participants into work experiences with local employers for 2011-2012. WDA will reimburse Workforce Institute for all direct expenses related to employment, including salary in the amount not to exceed 52,000 benefit and mileage. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under the Sheriff, apply for 50% reimbursements through the Office of Justice Programs Bulletproof Best Partnership Program and if approved, <coughs> will return 17000 to Sheriff's Equipment Account. This is necessary by contract in accordance with manufacturer specifications. The vests are required to be replaced every five years. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you go back to number 16, 17, and 18, please? <coughs> Increased sale and use tax pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 5739.021 and 5741.021 by one fourth of one percent for a five year period of time for purposes of supporting criminal administrative justice services in Lorain County. Notice will be in the Chronicle and Journal on June 29th and July 6th, public hearings on July 13th and 20th at 10 a.m., and an informational hearing on July 13th at 5 p.m. This will be on the November 8, 2011 ballot and become effective April 1st, 2012. I'll so move. If I uh, can get the second, then we'll go second, into and we'll discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, our budget director, Lisa Hobart, with some numbers. What we've prepared, uh, well, what Lisa's prepared is the revenues and expenditures for 2011 and 2012 for the purpose of discussing putting a sales tax on the ballot in November. And I will turn it over to you, Ms. Hobart. Good morning. Morning. Well, we're looking at, I don't know exactly how you want me to format this. Um, well, give us an overview starting with the estimated revenues. Okay, our estimated revenue as of right now that's certified by the Budget Commission is for 2011, $42,143,000. For 2012, which I have received the budget packages in May of this year, which will be certified in July when we do the tax budget for the Budget Commission, $41,280,000. So a shortfall of close to a million dollars in less revenues Correct. for 2012. Correct. Now in saying that, we can go back to 2011. Mm -hmm. um, our current estimate for local government is $3.5 million. It looks like we will prob uh, projected revenue to come in in that account will be approximately $4.2 million. And that does include all of the cuts that the state has passed down to us. Our sales tax is trending at a higher rate. Our current estimate in there is 14.4 million. It looks like we are slated to receive 14.8. Could be slightly higher than that for this year. Um, our projected expenditures for this year are about $45.2 million. Projected expenditures for 2012 are approximately $52.8 million. And that being that we don't have the $6.8 million from the criminal justice fund from two years ago. Correct. To fund the jail and the prosecutor's office, that money now falls back. Well, that responsibility falls back fund. in the general fund. Correct. To fund. 
not what we raise spending seven million dollars. Sorry. It's not that we raise spending seven million dollars. Absolutely for next not. Year. No. So we're looking at with our estimated revenues and projected carryovers versus our expenditures for 2012, a shortfall of approximately $6.2 million. Questions, board, discussion? Yeah. Um, we talked about this before. The, with the expenditures on, uh, for 2012, $52 million, or we can go with the um, 2011. How much control do we, as a board, have over the expenditures? Uh, I did those numbers. I thought it was a third, uh, wasn't hang it? Hang on, I've got it all broken down here on one of these pages. Uh, basically, out of $52 million general fund, looking at 2012, untouchable based on what the board has spoke about, not touching the safety at all, uh, sheriffs and or jail. Uh, we are looking at untouchable of 28 million. Now, if you add the prosecutors into the touchable, I'm sorry, I, into the touchable part, we're at 26 million untouchable. untouchable. Untouchable is 28 million, including the prosecutors. Figuring the courts will require us to have prosecutors in every courtroom. Correct. Uh, if they don't, then we've got uh, 26 million, which gives us 26 million dollars of non journal entried monies. So that would leave 26 million working off of that number. Does that include the Board of Elections? No, Board of Elections is an untouchable. Right, so that's... That, that the untouchables, what I have is untouchables. Have, I did uh, it. Yeah, why I don't did you it. name those that the we can't The untouchables is the appellate court at 197,000, common pleas court at 3.2 million, all of domestic relations courts at 7 million, probate court at half a million, even though we've seen some cost savings out of there of 20,000. I put the clerk's office at 1.1 million as an untouchable based on, you know, we'd have to figure the breakdown. Uh, the muni courts within the county, Lorraine, Elyria, Oberlin, and Avon Lake are mandated. That's 1.1 million. Uh, been mentioned, no touching the sheriff. That's 5.2 million. And then we've got the veteran services from last year's budget. This isn't the increase they've asked for this year at 1 million approximately as ones we don't have the ability to change lower. Correct. And that number could go up to a half a million dollar more based on the ask from the Veteran Services Commission, which we'll be discussing next week. Uh, so basically, if you take the $26 million that we do have say over that won't be ordered or we have to fund, we were talking yesterday, probably in the area, Jim, a third of those dollars are fixed costs that can't be touched anyway, correct? Sorry, Commissioner. <laughs> I uh, told you he doesn't pay attention. <laughs> well, well you guys were having a discussion. I was reading something else. Uh, <coughs> just taking the fixed the cost. Yeah, I thought there was about, when we spoke briefly yesterday, if you look in there, the biggest line items are obviously benefits and uh, salaries. Mm -hmm. But some of the fixed costs that we pay for and, and some of the other lines, probably about 30%. So. Right. So taking that 30% number, a third basically, and taking $9 million away from that $26 million, would be about $17 million in personnel costs uh, that would be touchable, and you would have to take a third of that out to make the $6 million shortfall. There's, there's a small and smaller pie uh, to be able to deal with the problem if we have uh, no, in a, no ability to uh, work within 70 to 75 percent of the other general fund areas of expenses. So, so clearly, with a large deficit, you have a small pool uh, to drink from. So, and that pool being recorder, <coughs> treasurer, recorder, treasurer, uh, auditor, um, parts of the clerk of court's office, and the commissioner's office. Correct. And prosecutor parts of the prosecutor's office would be included in that Part part. I don't know what it would be potentially. And then we have out of that also. I went through what we've always uh, our allocations discretionary. And if we cut everything we're doing there, it's about $564,000. Community Alliance eliminating county transit. I don't know if we have to do an office on aging. Is that required? No, we can't eliminate uh, transit. I altogether. know we can, but I, I was doing right. total numbers. Okay. Trying to find a 
the Office on Aging is is under the Ohio Revised Code. How you uh, supplement it is is uh, discretionary. Okay. Well, it's seventy eight thousand dollars. That's bare. That's bare minimum. The, the seventy eight thousand right. dollars is salary, salary and benefits of the director. Right. And then we had, uh, and you also give them in-kind floor space okay. on the Gates Building, and then that would be touching the Glide Project, Team Lorraine County, the Chamber, OSU Extension. So time soil for and you, water. and soil and water, mm -hmm. OSU Extension. If we don't fund it to the minimum, eighty-six thousand four hundred dollars, plus the approximate fifteen thousand we give it out of solid right. waste, we eliminate the 4-H program. Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, learned that a couple years back. Mm -hmm. That's only half a million bucks. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of discretionary. We've eliminated most of discretionary spending. I didn't put the airport in those numbers because we've been down that road again, and that's well, only 50000 You know, we're down from some highs of six or 700000 uh, less than 10 years ago to $50,000 a year, and we're growing corn on the roof of the buildings. <laughs> so if you eliminate that 50000 you essentially shut down the airport, and then you're back with your FAA problem. It's so barely open. It's barely open now. We have to do it. So, I mean, that I we didn't have put that number. We don't have an option Right. I didn't put that number in. So I try to do a breakdown of what, you know, things we've talked about, what can be touched, can't be touched. But you're talking at uh, $6 million out of $17 million that is able to be touched. And we've only got approximately 525 general fund employees now, down from about 750. When Commissioner Kurkowski and myself first came into office, we're down a third. I would have to wonder where we're going to come up with another third of that personnel. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm okay with going through and uh, passing a resolution to have the hearings to allow the voters to decide if we're going uh, to have a sales tax increase. My concern on here is um, one to five year period. Um, I would like to have that reduced to three years. And then something that came in, I'm not sure if you got this from uh, Mr. Ennis uh, regarding the I got all kinds legal of stuff, state uh, issue. Uh, I brought up yesterday, just or last week, talking about uh, if we went through the reduction in the yep. Uh, 1.6 inside mill for the property tax mm -hmm. and then possibly even going with a half percent increase in the sales tax to offset it that way we're giving a break to homeowners homeowners property, property owners, owners uh, seniors and that and then it's uh, up to the taxpayers to decide if they want to pay the tax or not as far as what items they want to purchase so we give them a break there. So you're looking at an option of we would then put a hold on our 1.6 inside millage. Give me some language. Yeah, it was it was an interesting statute, and it was Commissioner Williams brought it up um, last week, and uh, we were previously of the understanding that if we didn't utilize our inside millage, other people could invade. We call it invading that inside millage. Mm -hmm. Um, Jerry went back and, and you know, did some research and shredded the code a bit and came up with uh, uh, a way of basically parking uh, the inside millage. You may want to speak from there. Right. After our last meeting, I did some further uh, research, and for some reason this isn't cross-referenced with the sales tax um, statutes, but there is a statute. Uh, section 5705.313 that does allow uh, the commissioners to reduce the inside millage in connection solely with um, uh, the kind of sales tax uh, that we are uh, considering here and if that is done then no other entity is permitted to uh, take that inside millage. Uh, would we need then at that point probably to get a number from the auditor what that would affect per homeowner, I guess, within the county if the 1.6 inside millage was taken off so they knew what kind of savings they would have? Lisa, how much are we generating on the inside millage right now? 8.3? Uh, 8.1. You, uh, you, you can do it in parts. I mean, you okay. can reduce part of your inside. The only key is you're not allowed to reduce it more than your sales tax brings in. The, you know, the good thing is that Jerry said it wasn't cross-referenced. I believe that we're able to basically suspend park the inside millage until a future date if you change that because it's linked to the sales tax. Right. If it wasn't linked to the sales tax, then we'd be exposed for somebody else to try to claim that inside millage up to the 10 mills limitation. So it was an interesting 
uh, statute there, and it, it could it could shift some cost around. Uh, with well, it takes it off the property tax. owners and puts it on everybody else as a use tax. It, it does become a consumer tax. Right. Uh, so, but you know, mindful that you're going to have those folks that come out that are going to indicate to you that sales tax are regressive taxes. So right. we, we went through that the last. Been time. there, done that. No. I just got the information uh, this morning. I was taking a look at it, so it's and the it, reason it's not on here. Yeah, that's not time sensitive, uh, Commissioner. You can actually, you probably have to wait until you uh, you pass the other resolution before you do that. But you, that can be done at any time. Okay, so we don't actually have to pass a resolution on what the verbiage is going to be for November. We just have to pass a resolution to have hearings. We don't do oh, the verbiage. Today, yeah, today. today, yeah. So item 16, 17, and 18. We don't have to get into that type of detail today. Well, we do because we have, I mean, you can, you can consider as many as you want, but we have to publish notice, and in that notice we have to have exactly what we're <coughs> considering. So if we're going to consider a half, then we should also publish notice of a half. Okay. Do we have a copy of I think last time we did, ago, what, six or eight? <laughs> I can get it. I don't have it out here with you. You don't have it out here. No. That just, I think having all those out there confuse the public and they think that we're going after everything. You know, I think if we decide what more specifically what we think we need or what we know we need, then I think it would be easier for people to understand. I don't want this starting off as a, something that's confusing to people. Well, I mean, and the only reason being bringing out the language is on the half a percent well, and adding the temporary language to it and then coinciding that with the possibility of using the half a percent, rolling back the property tax. Well, you, the inside millage thing you don't have to You don't do. have, you no. just need the language for just the a, half a just, percent. Just so those whatever. would all read the same except you would take the quarter and put the half in your years, everything else would read the same. So the first one is just for your criminal administrative well, justice. Well, Commissioner Williams also brought up the possibility of going for a three-year, three not a five-year. Mm -hmm. So right. you would have to have that also. It, there's, there's also, <clears throat> there may be a other, another slight issue there, and, and uh, we need to check on that eventually, not right now. And that is um, in, in our, our master indentures for our, some of our bonds, I, I, I believe that we do reference the fact that we set aside uh, and dedicate a portion of the inside millage each year. Mm -hmm. When we set the, mm -hmm. the inside, you know, what's going to operations and what's going to debt service. To make sure I, that debt service is going Well, I have to make sure we stay in conformity with that. If we've indicated in those documents, Craig, you know the ones I'm talking about, uh, you know, that we make certain assertions in there. And I know that we have probably going to debt service about three million of that. Eight. 2.1 of the Justice Center. Well, we were, that that load's going down. So, but we have to make sure that we don't do the take enough away from the take too much away from the inside millage where we're not making uh, the set aside for our debt service on our bonds. Well, we're talking about that though. We've got the veterans here. The veterans get one half of one mil under the language. Well, they're they're eligible for up, up to, to point two point five of one mil if we eliminate the inside millage. They're, they're, I'm just they're, asking the language. I don't again, you remember we talked about that language. Mm -hmm, when right. they passed that, there was no inside millage able correct. to levy that tax on. You it was already fully right. There was really no, so it was an unfunded mandate. So the number that they're going to use is still predicated upon that. Where you get the money is up to you. Okay, yeah. all right then. I did just asking. So okay, we have 16, 17, and 18. We want to add 16A, 17. A or B's, 18 B's to the half a percent? Well, uh, let's Why first talk are we about. talking about a half a percent? I thought we were. Tom just brought up the possibility of going for a half a percent and doing a rollback of the inside millage. Yeah. It, it still gives us the same amount of money that we're asking for to get through the budget um, shortfall. No, about a million one short because it's 8.1 million inside millage and we're bringing sales tax 6.5 to 7 million. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to get that uh, increase for. The Correct. So we traded across. But right. What it does is it, it just gives the property tax um, people a break. A break. Right. So uh, seniors and that, it's going to give them a break. Right. I mean, everyone a break, but it's just another way where we can get the revenue that we have. 
and we're, we're lowering the taxes for something that people normally can't lower, and that's mm -hmm. property taxes. Well, I never problem with that. I actually like the idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. So uh, now with the, the three years on it, we know that there's a possibility that we will get an additional revenue source from the state. Possibility. <laughs> And that with uh, with the casinos, um, and that's why I was looking at three years. I believe it also gives uh, the voters; they know that in three years we're going to have to still stay on top of the budget, and be fiscal responsible mm -hmm. with it. And uh, three years, I think we, they may go for over five years. That's just my personal opinion on that. Well, it's just a matter of bringing it back. If you were well, depending if we can do the half percent or the quarter percent, I guess we would decide that at that point. If it's a quarter percent, I would think just to try and figure out where we're going to be in the next couple of years, we need the five years because I don't see the economy springing back in two or three. Uh, if we're doing the half a percent, I wouldn't mind a three because we would be able to, you know, reinstitute the inside millage we'd be parking. So, I mean, I guess it would be a, how we would explain it out there. I, I would prefer to keep both of them at the same the same years, three years on that. Um, we can go through, we can add the, uh, like you said, 16A and 17A or, um, to it and just talk about it in the uh, discussions in the open forum. How do you want to word this? Well, they would we have to be, I mean, if you're going to do we have to go here to as a quarter and mm -hmm. then we would do three additional ones at the half percent. So you're going to have six resolutions out there for public. He's asking to move to three years on the. We could just amend and percent. put these as three. Do you want to do the quarter percent at three years also? Quarter percent at three years as well. Um, now let's take a look. Do we need all three of these here right now? Do if we you're going to consider anything, this is this has to be done in order to have your public hearing. I mean, you can decide on July 27th which one you'll actually do, but you have to have all this. I understand that, but uh, to move on, do we have to have the three? The three that are currently on here. There's no, only it's one your choice. The first one right. is just for criminal administrative justice. The second one is for general fund and criminal administrative justice. The third one is a ge general fund only. Fund yeah, I think only. we want this to go to the criminal well, justice. justice. Correct. correct. Let's scratch 17 and 18. Right. right. The agreement of the board. Absolutely. Yes. And then we can that way everybody knows where the money's going. Do you need right. a formal resolution for that to scratch 17 and 18 from no, the just agenda? Take just take them off. Okay. And then we'll have 16A, which would be at same verbiage, uh, different time period of three years. And then I guess a, a new 17, which would, or 16B, whatever you want to call it, yeah, at a half percent with the uh, reduction on the 1.6 inside millage for property. We put that in the sales tax language, Jerry? No, I no, thought that, no. that doesn't, no. that's a totally separate, separate thing. Right. My only concern is if we don't put it in that language, people who are going to vote for it, they're not going to see it there. All they're going to see is a half well, percent sales right, tax. Right, I know, but it doesn't go, it doesn't go on the ballot. Not vote. We cannot put that on the in the We'll verbiage. just have to educate mm -hmm. them in the public hearings and in the newspapers. And <coughs> it's just a resolution. You what have. we do, here you go, but Jerry. It doesn't go on the ballot. If we decide no. to put it on the ballot, whatever we come up for language, and if we end up with the half percent and rolling back, we will do a resolution the same day once we approve the language for, that yeah, we're going to go forward. Just, you could just then do pass a resolution, the resolution. Based on passage of the half a percent, we will roll back the 1.6 inside millage. Correct. That would be the following right. resolution. That means they're on the same day, same reporting in the paper, and that's what we'll talk about if that's the one that passes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That work? That works. That works. Okay. Okay. Back Madam Clerk, we, we have, oh, sorry, Lord. Back when we um, were putting this on the ballot in the past, I thought there was a dollar figure that we had come up with. Somebody had come up with, I don't know if it was a college or somewhere where it, showed how much it would cost an average person, either was it a month or a year, for the increased sales tax. Write it down to a day based on income. Right. And wasn't it like $3 a day or was it? Uh, no, it was less than that. Someone made a quarter a day, was A quarter yeah. a day? It was based on a 50000 income. I think it was like $10 a month or something. Uh, I'd like to find those again. Do we have all, the we've got them we all, have all that? Got all that? And then to get an idea of if this is going to be a wash for 
the homeowners and, and the and our seniors as far as you know how much they would normally spend on sales tax and how much they're spending on well commissioner it, it, it can't be a wash if we don't raise any additional revenue so we, you know I, I I think it's going to offset and shift some of the burden around a little bit right but it but it still is a revenue enhancement application so you know, the the there may be there may be some that that end up and at the end of the day saving us a little bit of money, but all, all in all, this is going to be a revenue incre increasing mode. So, so what it would be though, Jim, to argue that point though is the seniors who don't spend as much dollars on taxable items because meds aren't taxed, most groceries aren't taxed, right. they might see some net savings on it. Uh, I understand. I I just don't know there's going to be that many people that are going to be completely neutral. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of a motion, David. Can you wait a minute? All right. Uh, can I call for the vote on number 16 as it's presented? Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Aye. Okay. And that's at a quarter percent for five that's years. That's at the quarter exactly percent. As it, okay. Okay. And the next one would be exactly as it reads there increased sale and use tax for one quarter for three years for criminal justice. Okay. Also move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Then 16. The, the third one would be exactly as it is, except increase sales and use tax for half a percent for a three year period. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Go ahead, David. You had a comment. Thank you, Commissioners. I just wanted to point out that even seniors, if they're renting, are going to end up having an adjustment based on, I mean, if the landlords actually lower their rents or keep their rents from rising any because they are paying less, I mean, somebody's paying yeah. that property tax. So right. let's just remember that, it, you know, seniors who are living on fixed incomes in rental property, if the landlords pass it on, great. But if they don't, seniors are going to pay the one and not get any relief on the other. So just be a little careful by in saying, you know, what happens to seniors with all right. this? Well, even I would if they're not that because they're the lowest portion that pays into an increased sales tax because they spend the least amount of untaxable goods. So that's a comparison we used a couple years ago. I understand. All I right. just mean, again, where that additional quarter comes from, if, if you roll back the inside millage, it's not, you know, even if they're not property owners, they may see a, a savings but they won't necessarily and that depends on the renting versus owning well, i still think lorraine county the bulk of the residents are probably homeowners at this point or live in single family homes and they do rental properties i don't know well it's so it, the numbers in work. oberlin it's it's more like half and half so lorraine's the same one yeah so i, I mean. just yeah. just when you're pushing it i'm i'm for it i i went for i voted for a half a percent without any of this stuff but <laughs> Thank you, David. Any other comments from the audience? I guess we can go on the public comment real quick before the report since we're talking about it. I guess not. Madam Clerk, back to you. Mr. Cortez, County Administrator. Except to say I hope I see everybody out at the best of Lorraine County Thursday evening. Uh, come out and support Lorraine <coughs> County's uh, finest and best organizations and uh, vote for your favorite. Uh, it was a big success last year. and. Uh, we're hoping for even a, a larger turnout this year. It's uh, really important to the merchants and uh, entrepreneurs and uh, people that uh, have uh, stuck it out through the uh, downturn in the economy and things are coming back for them. So it'll be a great time to see uh, a lot of what the best of Lorraine County has to offer. Uh, and it's at Spitzer Conference Center out to college. It's from 6 until 9 o'clock Thursday night. I know this won't be aired by them, but for those in the audience and word of mouth passing, we want to get a lot of people out there. And that concludes my comments. Thanks. Ms. Serena, Assistant County Prosecutor. Commissioners, I do need a very short executive session. No more than five minutes at max. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Just well, don't let uh, Cortez in there then. Updating, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we, updating pending litigation, and I need to discuss a real estate uh, purchase involved with developmental disabilities. But okay. Okay. Commissioner's report. Well, I told you last week I was um, heading over to our collection center um, to give away a rocker to the 10,000th car that went through our facility 
uh, last Wednesday. So here's a picture of Gail and Ron Shank. It's one uh, chair. We only gave one chair away, but uh, they both took a picture of each of them sitting in it, and they loved it. Um, I'll tell you what, what a busy place. Uh, we had not only people dropping off uh, hazardous, household hazardous waste and bulbs and all kinds of things. We also had the e-scrap going on on the other side where the college was giving away refurbished computers to those people who had finished um, their training program, uh, their computer training program. So um, everybody is very excited about um, our collection center. Um, it's clean. It, it runs like clockwork. And I was very proud of all the people working there. They work very hard and doing a great job. Um, I also, Monday, attended the Goodwill, my board meeting. And year to date, uh, the Goodwills that the commissioners have provided to Goodwill um, for their use to, to transport people around is now at 1,390 rides. So they're doing a lot of good out in our community. And on note of busing, um, I received something from um, Colleen Donnelly from Nowaka, and there is an opportunity for people to get uh, buses through Nowaka, and I, I know the veterans were looking for a bus, and I, you need to get on a list, and I can help you through that process if, if you need uh, a bus for transportation for our veterans, and we'll get you through that process and uh, get much needed transportation for our veterans. So and I see one of our, our commissioners are in the audience. Did you not get the message that our meeting is next week? No. No. You did not? No, we oh. adjusted all that. It's 9.45 next week. We, we, we had a communication breakdown on our end. Oh, no. All right. And I believe that is the end of my report. No report. No report. Wow. <laughs> I'm CCAO, sorry. CCAO, I had state budget <laughs> issues. Working with Lisa on our budget here. That's just normal <laughs> stuff. Uh, actually, uh, the EPA issue um, that we had here, I uh, got uh, Mr. Cortez in touch with the governor's office to work on that. Uh, Jim, I'm just going to have you go through and give an update since you know the details. Well, we did make it down. Uh, the governor's office did provide his aid. Um, uh, Scott worked with us. I, and I think you made a call in there uh, on that from your office. Yes. Uh, and Commissioner Cable was also lobbying downstate for that. Uh, so well, we got some real good assistance out of the governor's office once we got their attention and we did meet with a lot of people from the EPA, Republic was there, Jerry was there, uh, Keith Bailey was there. Um, I would say the meeting was pretty intense for, for about an hour and uh, at the, towards the conclusion uh, we told the EPA that we would be agreeable to any solution that didn't cost the residents of Wayne County any financial burden. They, they went out and caucused on their team and, and they came back and they offered a, a remedy um, which would uh, put orders and findings against us for uh, um, reallocating funds around the um, plan to do what we did, but they will not be finding for any recoveries, uh, any fees, any fines, and we have an additional six months to um, to arrange the relationship differently, which in essence puts us into the new plan, which already takes care of that. So it, it, it looked like an agreeable solution that accomplished things on multiple levels. It gave the EPA what they wanted, which was to prevent other counties from being as innovative as we were and finding a way of doing something that they didn't agree with, but was still within our plan. Uh, but it also made sure that it maintained the integrity of our, our, our dollar uh, structure here and our, our fee structure and our abilities to continue moving forward in solid ways. So I, I believe it was a good solution for everybody. That, that should be coming down, I would think, in the next week or two. Uh, didn't they indicate that, Jerry? Yes, that should be. Um, so on behalf of the board, I, I did uh, tentatively agree to that settlement. But well, when it comes down, you'll have to you know, more fully take a look at it. But uh, I think working with them down there was pretty good. What I was very excited about was that we got resolution at the meeting. Mm -hmm. We didn't go away, have three more letter writing campaigns, have another meeting. Give a, I've worked with the EPA before. It's, it, it's been, you know, a painful process over months, sometimes years, going back and forth. 
we actually crafted a solution, got right to the, the meat of the issue, and did it all in about an hour and 10 minutes, and we were on our way back to Lorraine County. And that is a new experience for me down in Columbus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Commissioner, I think they were, they were very supportive of the objectives that we accomplished there by saving our, our program and at the same time saving jobs. They were concerned that if, if other entities use the same mechanisms, they would do it in an abusive manner. So they wanted to make sure they didn't establish precedent, bad precedent for their program. But I think in the end, they agreed with what we accomplished through the process. Good. Yeah, well, thank you, gentlemen, for going down there and uh, representing Lorraine County. Uh, last thing I want to bring up is I had a uh, college student, uh, Lorraine County resident, Joshua Bates. Uh, he's from Ashland University. He's been doing some work here. Uh, Josh, if you could come up and just give us an update where you're at and uh, the project that you're working on. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Good morning. My name is Joshua Bates, as Mr. Williams just said. And first and foremost, I am a resident of Loring County, and I have been since 1995. And I'm currently a senior at Ashland University. I'm working on my bachelor's in economics and political science, and I'll graduate in December. Um, earlier this year, my advisor and myself, Dr. Nadler, um, we met with Commissioner Williams about my senior thesis project that I was planning on working on. And my thesis project is the creation of a multivariate regression analysis model of county government. And I decided to do this on Loring County because I'm from here. And all across the U.S., local governments are facing fiscal crises, as I mean, you guys were just discussing. And in order to, for public officials to make accurate decisions on the budget, they need to have a, a predicative and causal effect model so that they can ask what if questions as if they cut funding to something, what will happen? And my thesis is to create a type of model that can be used across the board for county governments. And that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm currently working on it as we speak. <laughs> So. Good for you. When will you have it completed? Yeah. Yeah. We need it. <laughs> My goal is to have it completed at the very latest by the time I graduate, but I am ahead of schedule, and my, I will have something physical to give the county at no cost when I finish soon. I can't put a date on it at the moment. Yeah. But Sounds I like am, a lot of work. Yeah. It is, and I am working on it, and it's, like I said, it's at zero cost to the county. I'm not asking for anything from it and it's just going to be given, so. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And a report. Um, before we go on, um, I have a letter up here from Captain Drozdowski. Uh, we were unsuccessful in obtaining the COTS grants in 2009 and 2010, and you are looking for um, a resolution to, for cash match for the COTS grant? Or what, what do you need from us? Do you need something right. from us today? No, he doesn't need no, For two or three weeks, we spoke to Drys. You weren't up here yet. He oh. spoke to Mr. Williams and myself. Well, it's just some numbers. Do you, did you want to talk certain. about it? Give him a chance. We still got to read through the numbers. Yeah. So that was the, was the budgetary stuff. Um, yeah, I put in another COPS grant for two more officers, but what I brought today was a spreadsheet indicating should we get the grant, what it would cost in year one from the county general fund, year two, year three, and then finally in year four, which you got to take the whole salaries and everything. And I had spoken to Mr. Kalo about it earlier. I figured you can look at it, and then if next week you want to bring it up, we can discuss it at that time. But I, um, Teresa asked me to bring the spreadsheet because this kind of was the same questions were asked the last time to see what the county is going to be basically on the hook for should we get this grant. So it's. Probably we can wait another week and it's not going to hurt anything. Okay. But we did apply since it was out there, and we can only apply for two according to the formula of the COPS grant, but we're still out there applying for the grants trying to get guys back. Well, I, I hope we get it this time. I do too. We deserve it. Well, we're trying. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else wishing to address the board? Go ahead, Teresa. Is Tom done? Yes, he said he was done with okay. his report. Um, 9.30, we will meet with Huron County Commissioners with regards to the joint Draper Ditch Project. 
uh, board correspondence. Will the reading be waived? Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kasky. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Public comment. I think they already passed on that. So, yeah. motion moving executive session is outlined by our county administrator. Well, nope, our county our prosecutor. Second. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kasky. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda. sky is a crowded place, overflowing with thousands of voices and sounds sent swiftly but silently at the speed of light. From places far and near, these invisible messages arrive at their destinations to be transformed magically by a wonder called radio. Two million people around the world enjoy this wireless window to the world, and they are called amateur radio operators or hams. This is their story, the fascinating, fun hobby and public service of amateur radio. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby and public service enjoyed by people from all walks of life. Men, women, young and old, all share a common love of communication. Seven, eight signals from both of you and uh, could copy you 100% all the time, so the band was kind of, kind of strange. Many enjoy casual conversations with others across the country or around the world. Today, amateur radio is closely linked to computers, connecting keyboards and PCs to radios in a variety of ways. Amateur radio operators come from all walks of life, housewives, students, missionaries, movie stars, and just plain folks. They're all ages, all nationalities, and income levels. Radio hams are licensed by the U.S. government after passing a multiple answer examination covering rules, radio theory, and operating practices. Study guides are available that include a pool of questions from which actual test questions are selected. No previous radio or electronics experience is necessary. Most amateur radio operators set up their own home stations. Some enjoy using voice, while others use Morse code or digital modes. And some even use amateur television. Bruce Thorne, KE8TI, shows the main elements of a basic ham radio station. As an example of a typical amateur radio station, it consists mainly of the transceiver, which is a combination transmitter and receiver. And most of the amateur transceivers today are powered with 12 volts, so you need a power supply to convert 110 volts into uh, 12 volts. You also have an additional speaker, which is an accessory, but it improves the sound of the transmission a great deal. There are also people who trans or communicate with Morse code or CW. And also people use microphones as well. Then a clock is also needed because everybody works on coordinated universal time, which is equivalent to the old Greenwich time. Many hams today also connect their computer to their station and work with digital modes. This particularly is a mode called PSK31 and you communicate through the radio with your computer. Also the computer is used for logging contacts which makes 
paper obsolete and improves the uh, consistency of the station operation. And of course the final element in an amateur station is the antenna. And the antenna can be as simple as a homemade wire antenna or as involved as a multi-element commercial aluminum beam and that completes your station. You could take ham radio anywhere with you, portable or mobile. If you want to talk around the world, it's very simple. You just mount a radio inside your vehicle, such as this one here, and a fairly simple antenna on the back of the vehicle will let you talk anywhere in the world. We're here at Chagrin Lagoon's Yacht Club, of which I'm a member, and we also have a uh, amateur radio club here, uh, which has Oh, about 60, 70 members. Most of them are husbands and wives. Uh, the reason for the success of this club is that uh, amateur radio goes with boating. And uh, when we're traveling, uh, we pretty much know where uh, some of the other uh, hams are, uh, when they're expected back, what they're doing, all by way of amateur radio. Well, there's one other way to enjoy ham radio, and that is use it while you're flying with this handheld transceiver. It's a two-meter transceiver. When I'm up in the air, say at uh, 5,000 feet, I can see much farther, and therefore I can transmit much farther. So it's a lot of fun flying and using ham radio at the same time. Or you might just want to take your radios up, up, and away in hot air balloons. Dan Greathouse, N8NBC, keeps in touch with his ground crew via amateur radio using a handy talkie. Okay, I'm going to call on the other one and tell them we're going to be on 144.34 here. Chippewa Lake, that's Chippewa Lake, Joe. Okay, that's the shoreline with the boats on there. Roger. Dan also supplies interesting aerial views while gliding through the sky at about 3,000 feet by using an amateur television transmitter. What he sees from above is relayed by ham TV to other amateur operators on the ground. Ham radio is enjoyed the world over. Each country has its own international call sign prefix and licensing procedures. Many foreign radio operators use English, so it's easy to get to know them and learn their way of life. Radio contacts between the U.S. and England are common because there's no language barrier. Amateur radio is a wonderful way to meet people all around the world. And oh, here's Kings Lynn. This is an ancient town. All the traffic into the town passes through this gateway, which was built in 1520. From my home here in Kings Lynn, England, I've made friends with people in many countries, including, of course, the United States. Uh, in fact, I've been keeping in close touch by ham radio with my friends in Ohio since about 1970. They've been over here to visit us and we've been over there to visit them. You, you can see that ham radio really shows what a small world it is and it's a hobby that can be enjoyed by people everywhere. When emergencies strike, radio hams are ready. This public service tradition is the serious side of amateur radio, in addition to being a fun hobby. When normal communications fail, hams are ready to offer their services, as they did when Hurricane Ophelia hit the eastern coast of North Carolina in September of 2005. Uh, this is uh, Whiskey 4, Romeo, Juliet, Foxtrot, Net Control for the North Carolina Tar Hill Emergency Net. This net has been activated in response to Hurricane Ophelia, which is currently off the North Carolina coast. Well, the main function is uh, backup communications in case the telephone systems go down or the two-way radio, satellite phones, whatever they have uh, in management. Uh, our traffic here has been mainly information type traffic, uh, where we would hear information such as a power outage uh, that would occur and we would immediately relay that to emergency management and that was our function, vice versa, it goes either way. Ham radio operators working in, in our area, uh, a lot of us are engineers, and we have built the antenna to, antennas to, to stand a Cat 5. We've got strong coax, our towers are very, very strong, this thing's not going anywhere. Uh, 
Uh, our radios are solid. We do have backup power. We've got backup to the backup power. So uh, we are in good shape. We have uh, plenty of HF communications. Um, I, and I really believe that we could take a Cat 5. We've, we've never been down. We are 100% up at all times. Uh, our communications has never failed. And so as some other folks have so nicely put it into a phrase, <laughs> we are hard fast and, and uh, fail safe. So we are, we are always up. Other communications, and I spoke with um, uh, management just uh, day before yesterday, one of the county uh, uh, coordinators, uh, who I reminded him of in 99 when their satellite phones went out, and he kind of looked and said, yeah, I said, we were it. And so we were the communications, and so uh, we're kind of pleased with that. We're, we really are. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day. This is Kilowatt 8 Uniform, Tango Tango Field Day. Each year, radio hams across the country conduct an emergency drill called Field Day. For 24 hours, operators set up temporary communication command posts. Using portable generators or batteries to power their radio equipment, this station used solar power for its 5-watt transmitter. Shelters are often tents or mobile homes, and temporary antennas are erected in simple ways. Operators test their communication skills by exchanging messages with other field day stations. Some use voice, while others use digital modes with computer keyboards or Morse code keys. Participating radio clubs are ranked according to their ability to handle large numbers of messages over the continuous 24-hour drill. It's a fun exercise, but also one with a serious side, preparing for a real emergency should it come. The International Space Station Each symbolizes year, 25, how the amateur radio hams around the world the gather in Dayton, Ohio. Many for their ham are benches. also licensed it's radio hams to meet and greet who operate while in orbit on the shortwave bands. There's a lot of new radio equipment on display, a massive radio flea market where hams sell their used equipment. It's a good place to get that extra piece of equipment you couldn't afford new. There are forums food, and much more. My dad was my prime influence in getting my license. He had been a ham since he was about 15 years old. And, you know, all the time when I was little, he'd get me in kids' contests. He would just saturate me with information about ham radio and, you know, just put it right on me. And I got so interested in it that I said, Dad, I want to be a ham too. So. He started teaching me code when I was five or six, and we worked up to learning all the theory things about ham radio, and here I am today, I'm 15, and my call is K3OOO. The Young Ladies Radio League is an international organization comprised of women from all over the U.S., as well as countries all over the world. And uh, there's a lot of things we do to let women know about the hobby. We have contests that the women can participate in. There's also contests. Our most popular one is the YLOM, where the women call the men and the men call the women and uh, get uh, QSL cards in, in, for contests. And we also provide scholarships for the young ladies who are interested in going to engineering field. We also provide our publication uh, via Braille or on tape for our members who are you know, who are, who are blind. So we try to approach every aspect of the hobby. We have women's interested in satellite communication, digital communication, uh, VHF, HF, contesting, just about anything you, you, you're interested in. And one of the unique things about YLRL is we have the, the women perspective. Even though it is a male-dominated hobby, it's a family that the whole family can do. Because we have uh, both young girls and boys involved in it. We have women involved in it and men. So it's truly a family hobby that everyone can do, everyone can enjoy, and everyone has a lot of fun with. D. Logan, a veteran ham radio operator, has helped dozens of persons enter the ranks and operators. Well, what you've seen in this video gives you a good cross-section of the wonderful world of ham radio. I hope it answered your questions. I've been a ham for many years, and I will tell you that people from all walks of life are in the hobby. It's terrific to have friends around the world, and I hope you're interested enough to follow through. Actually, uh, a lot of ways of doing that. Uh, you can go to a, 
an established ham who is licensed who can answer some questions. You can go to a radio club which might offer some classes that would help you prepare. Or you could study on your own, as many people do. There are a lot of good uh, references available. One of the ones that we use is this one called Now You're Talking. This is published by the American Radio Relay League, the national organization of hams, and it contains everything you need to prepare for the FCC entry-level technician license. You'll find a lot of things in here that will answer a lot of your questions, including uh, a question pool synopsis. So every question on the examination is, in, is uh, drawn from the question pool, which is in the book. So really, there are no surprises when you take the license exam. You can find uh, these reference books, perhaps, at your local library. You can find uh, them at a local retailer, perhaps. Or you can write to the American Radio Relay League, which has books available. This is a list of publications that they have. And finding them is very easy if you can access the Internet. So it's www dot a r r l dot org you'll find when you go on that website a lot of your questions answered and information that's available that you can write for there are a lot of uh, amateur radio magazines available sometimes you can get them at a local uh, bookstore uh, typically uh, qst is published by the ARRL. that's the uh, the main journal also there is cq and world radio these are uh, magazines that cover the wide world of ham radio, and they're quite interesting. I hope you will find amateur radio to your liking, and if you at some day get your license and get on the air, I look forward to hearing you. It's a wonderful hobby, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it as much as we do. As we say in ham radio, 73 and good luck. Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Welcome to the June 22nd, 2011 Lorain County Board of Commissioners meeting. Commissioner Kukowski has our dog this week. She's strong. She's a strong little girl. This is uh, about a four-month-old Brindle um, Boxer Mix. She's uh, going to be available this Saturday at our dog pound. Uh, we have about 40-some dogs at the pound right now, so we need your help in, in coming to rescue some of our little friends out there. We have all kinds of dogs to choose from. You can also check us out on our website to see what we have available. Look at how nice she is. She's such a good girl. She wants to go home with somebody. I'm sure she'd make a wonderful pet for someone. 
Boxers are really, really nice dogs. So come out and help us out and uh, bring home a pet for your family. Madam Clerk. Under resolutions number one, Job and Family Services Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Skowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. No advances, no repayments, requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Travel. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Under the commissioners, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction Lorraine County Commissioners. Mr. Cordes. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Cable, I know you have a uh, pressing business shortly after the board meeting today, so I'm uh, going to not ask for an executive session, but I do want to get a resolution uh, with regard to the labor contract we discussed in the executive session last week. Mm -hmm. um, so we can either do that at the conclusion here, the regular agenda items, or I can ask for that resolution now, or what would be the flavor of the board? Uh, that's the FOP contract? Uh, correct. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. That should uh, conclude a need for this line item. Thank you. Approve and waive the reading of the same of the county commissioner's meeting minutes of June 8th and 15th, 2011. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize the salary adjustment of Randall Widener, bailiff, Overland Municipal Court, effective July 4, 2011, at a biweekly rate of $511.24, reflecting two-fifths county share. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Approve and enter an agreement with Lorain County Growth Partnership to include a direct partnership for Northeast yes, Ohio sir. Sustainable Communities Consortium membership. $4.2 million was awarded by U.S. Department of HUD for three years. To consortium with local governments and nonprofit organizations in Northeast Ohio through NUACA as formal application and fiscal agent. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize a supplemental trust indenture, amendments, loan agreement, and related documents for series 1997 bonds issued for the benefit of EMH Regional Medical Center. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Cordes, mm -hmm. would you like to just give an update for the next three? Mm -hmm. Actually, I can't. Oh, well, you can't? Oh, okay. I didn't put them on the agenda. Oh, huh? okay. Well, what they are basically, they're just asking for a change from the 1997 uh, bonds we did for them, which we do for Community Health Partners or Mercy Hospital also. Yeah, I was, uh, I had information from them, but I, I wasn't, I should have looked at the draft. That's my bad. I didn't well, see I read that they through were on so there. What's I read that? through it. Just change uh, a couple of things in there. Items that have to be changed. Yeah, I think they're, they're uh, retiring some bonds. Right. And, it's still uh, over their cost. Right. But there's no, uh, we're, the county is not liable for any of the... Well, they're conduit bonds. We did the conduit right. bonds a number of years ago, and we actually asked uh, EMH to come back in county with their conduit bonds. They had been doing their, their health care bonds uh, out of county. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago, we re-engaged them to do them here in Lorain County, and we've had a very agreeable relationship. I just wasn't, I didn't pay attention to see that this was on there this oh, week, okay. and I had been working with their council through our bond council, so I'm sure that everything has been uh, provided for that was necessary. I'll so move. Second. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorize the Supplemental Trust and Denture Amendments to Loan Agreement and Related Documents for, for Series 2001 Bonds Issued for Benefit at EMH Regional Medical Center. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Caleb? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. 
Authorize the supplemental trust indenture amendments, loan agreement, and related documents for series 2008 bonds issued for the benefit of AVMH Regional Medical Center. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kale. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. I have a question. Would you like to get through 19, 20, and 25 and then go back to 16? The pleasure of the board's going to talk about that at the end. <coughs> sure. Yes. Okay. Please go to 19. Under 911, approve and enter an MOU with the Village of Wellington, where Village will provide ground area owned by the Village on Fairgrounds Road and the electricity, and 911 will provide this foundation and space for the Village's equipment and the communications building. This is a relocation of Lorain County Fire Systems repeaters from Southern Repeater Site, which is presently co located at State Route 58 Peck Wadsworth Road. Building will house Lorain County 911. Southwest Repeater, Combiner, Wellington Fire Repeater, Wellington Police Repeater, Southern Lorraine Ambulance <coughs> District Repeater, and County Voter Site Equipment. So moved. Second. Discussion. Was this added on? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't. This is, a, this is an agreement we've been working on since we lost our Verizon site. Uh, Jerry's been uh, very instrumental in, in working with the language so that we can have an alternative location for our equipment. We're, we're also being given... Uh, a portable, um, I guess you want to call it an office type, so to house the equipment and buy a Verizon. Uh, they no longer need that equipment, but we were housed with them in another location. The city of, the village of Wellington also has some equipment and they, they work collaboratively with us to uh, be able to work on that, use their tower out there, thus reducing some cost. There was just some nuances with the agreement with regard to liabilities and, and so forth. And I think, Jerry, you worked, you worked all those out in the, in the language? That's correct. And, and, and this MOU will provide for, for no-cost solutions to relocating some antennas and equipment to support the 911 operation. Okay. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under job and family, authorized purchase service agreements with various vendors for Title 20 social service block grant funded services for state fiscal year 12, effective July 1st, 2011 through June 30, 2012. Authorized director to execute on behalf of the board and amend for changes in programming and increased value with prosecutor's approval as to form. One, Cambridge Home Health Services, Laria for homemaker home health services in the amount not to exceed 18000 Neighborhood House Association, Lorain County, Lorain for emergency <coughs> shelter services in the amount not to exceed 50000 Lorain County Safe Harbor, Lorain for domestic violence services in the amount not to exceed 12500 Volunteer Guardianship Organization, Lorain County, Laria for adult guardianship services in the amount not to exceed 9000 So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kahle? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Authorized purchase service agreement with Murray Ridge Production Center, Laria, for cleaning services for state fiscal year 12, effective July 1st, 2011 through June 30, 2012, in the amount not to exceed 4500 Authorized director to execute on behalf of the board and amend for changes in program and increased value of prosecutors approve us to form. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kahle? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Under solid waste, instruct clerk to seek proposals from bidders for operation East scrap collection and recycling program for the year 2012 with two <coughs> optional one-year renewal, notice in Chronicle on June 24th and July 1st, pre-bid meeting at 10 a.m. on July 6th, room 532 at 5th floor administration building, and open at 2 p.m. on July 15th in meeting room D. So moved. Second. Discussion. Yes, I see Mr. Bailey's up Good to morning, talk about our East Scrap. Yeah, it's been three years, and it's time to go back out. Uh, the market has changed extremely in this area, and we're hoping for a positive change in our cost, all right? Okay. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. It's working well over there. Yeah. Mr. Kahle? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Mr. Williams? Oh, I'm sorry. On a vote for number? Yeah. Aye. For solid <laughs> waste. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> it's work like Jim now. He doesn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Under Workforce, amend resolution 11377 adopted June 15, 2011, approving an intern to purchase a service contract with the Workforce Institute for the purchase of one stop service coordinator, effective July 1, 2010, in the amount of $2,913,974. Said amendment is to reflect an increase of $39,808 due to the rapid response coordinator funding from WEA services. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Kahlo? Aye. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Approve and enter an MOU with Workforce Institute in Lorain County and Workforce Development Agency to assist in the hiring and employment of a youth work experience coordinator. Her primary function is to place youth program participants into work experiences with local employers for 2011-2012. WDA will reimburse 
Workforce Institute for all direct expenses related to employment, including salary in the amount not to exceed 52,000 benefit and mileage. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Under the sheriff, apply for 50% reimbursements through the Office of Justice Programs Bulletproof Best Partnership Program, and if approved, <coughs> will return 17,000 to sheriff's equipment account. This is necessary by contract in accordance with manufacturer specifications. The vests are required to be replaced every five years. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you go back to number 16, 17, and 18, please? Increase sailing. Our budget director, Lisa Hobart, with some numbers. What we've prepared, uh, well, what Lisa's prepared is the revenues and interest for 2011 and 2000. So a shortfall of 